Hello, and welcome to the reading guide on sections 8.1 and 8.2 of the OpenStax textbook, which introduced the idea of impulse as well as the idea of linear momentum. So we go through and we begin on page 284, where you have a nice little introduction, which will give you a nice overview of the topic. You've got a little bit of a heads up here, thinking about momentum being conserved. We'll address this in greater context in our conservation unit. What do I want you to get here? I want you to get the definition of momentum. Momentum is a vector quantity of mass times velocity. It's important to notice that this is in fact linear momentum. If you take other courses, you might hear of angular momentum, which is a related but different quantity. Here we're talking about linear momentum, which is mass times velocity. Here are the units for linear momentum. These don't get a special name like joules or newtons. It's just kilograms times meters over seconds. What I want is for you to know this definition and to be able to be comfortable in using it for calculation. So example 8.1 is a great example to go through to help you develop that skill. Here's an, so this is a nice example. In particular, I would suggest you pay attention to this discussion because it talks about how both moment, both mass and velocity can impact momentum. Page 285 discusses momentum and Newton's second law. This is important to pay attention to because it will bring us to the idea of impulse, which is the main thrust of this particular unit. Here you have how Isaac Newton actually formulated his second law, not as F equals MA, but in fact in terms of momentum. And it's mostly important, that section, because if you take this definition and multiply the T over, you get this form of Newton's second law, where this quantity here is the quantity which is the focus of this unit. And you can see from the expression, it's a force, applied for a time, and that the impulse is going to be related to the change in momentum. You may hear this referred to as the impulse momentum theorem, and it appears on your equation sheet. Here's a nice summary that summarizes the idea for you. And here on page 287, you have a nice example of calculating the change in momentum using the idea of impulse. This is really where I want you to get out of this particular unit. I want you to be able to calculate impulse and to connect that to changes in momentum. This is a particularly good example because that goes into the fact that both impulse and momentum are vector quantities. So the direction is relevant. Now you have a rather important bit of text actually here underneath this example, sort of tucked away, that you might miss, but I want you to pay attention to it. This definition of impulse includes an assumption that the force is constant over a time interval, which is generally not true. However, you can think of the average force. This brings us to the idea of graphs of forces as functions of time. If I make a graph of the force applied as a function of time, it will usually be non-constant, not a straight line. On such a graph, the impulse is the area under the curve, because impulse is force times time, which would be the area under a f of t graph. Now the effective or average force is that force such that I can create a rectangle with the same area as the area under my actual force curve. 
we will be using force versus time graphs to understand the forces involved of a person jumping in class. This is all I want you to read, only these first two sections. We'll come to 8.3, conservation of momentum, in our unit of conservation laws. Again, what I really want you to get out of this is understanding what impulse is as a force applied for some amount of time and be able to calculate it given a force and a time. I want you to understand that impulse is a vector. I want you to stand that, understand that impulse is related to the change in momentum of an object. Finally, the last thing I want you to understand is that impulse is the area under a force versus time graph. Those are your big headlines. Go through this reading with those headlines in mind and you should be good. This concludes this video.